Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, it has come to my attention that some people are using my videos for ASMR. Hmm. Do I seem to have a ASMR style voice? I don't know. If I do, please leave a comment down below. And I will see about starting up an ASMR YouTube channel for you guys. It is 2024. My baby brother has had surgery. I've not heard anything bad, so I'm going to assume things went well. And over the Christmas period, I was staying in a little quaint town called March. Spelt like the month, spelt like what soldiers do, because there used to be an army barracks nearby. And, um... It's a nice little town. My, the majority of my family lived there. Or the outskirts of the town. And um, I was thinking about moving to be close to my family. Um, my brother's surgery has put me in a melancholy again. And um, it's something I've been struggling with my entire life. And the funny thing is, a lot of people don't really understand what melancholy means. They chalk it up to something like depression, or some other kind of alphabetical mental disorder. My melancholy started, and I can vividly remember the day it started in me. I believe I was six years old, seven years old. No, I was seven. 1987, I was seven years old. And my great Dane, Ben, he, um, he passed away. And I used to, the Cobra family, and that's all I'm going to call us, the Cobra family, we are very, very, very attached to our pets, to our animals. Cats, dogs, lizards, snakes, spiders, you name it. And we love our animals. With so much love, so much care, it, it, it sometimes it hurts and amazes me at how much we care for our animals in the Cobra family. To the point where our animals know this and they are 100% devoted to us. Case in point, my great Dame Ben. He was so big, he would take up the whole of my bed and I would sleep on the floor. And there were times when Ben knew this. And so he would sleep on the floor next to me to keep me warm. <laughs> With my Fraggle Rock blanket and my He-Man pillow. And my mum and dad have tons of pictures of me and Ben just <laughs> out like a light. When I went to 
So first or second. Oh, it started in my primary school. That's like, I wouldn't say it's junior high, but it's in between kindergarten and junior high. It's, it's about that kind of thing. I was going to school and all of a sudden teachers were panicking and screaming thinking that there was a wow and I was like what the fuck's going on and I, oh there's a there's a, a horrible stray dog outside and it's, it's snarling and growling and whatnot and I looked out there and it was my dog Ben he managed to jump the back garden and find my primary school which was about four blocks five blocks away and I end up yelling Ben go home <laughs> he stops his ears perk up sees me his little stubs wiggling and I'm like go home and he lowers his head his ears go down you can see he was upset and I'm like please go home and he stops turns around and he walks home and he does he walks right up to the front door scratches at the front door my mum opens the front door and in he walks like nothing's changed oh my mum was furious furious she reminded me of that day. <laughs> she was like, Dad, I'm like, yes, Mum. Do you remember the day Ben went to your primary school and scared the shit out of the teacher? And I was like, yes, Mum, I remember it very vividly. And so my mum was telling me the story from her perspective, and <laughs> we all laughed. <laughs> One day, now, bear in mind, I was raised in a different time, so if what I'm about to say um, may upset you or trigger you, tough. Be upset, be triggered, I don't care. I do not apologize for it. I was being a complete and total fucker, and my mum went to correct me by striking me. And after her second or third hit on me, my dog Ben got in between us and refused her commands. His hunch went up, his teeth started snarling. He was angry that, you know, you're striking my friend, you're striking my, you're striking my cobra. No, 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 this will not do. And he intimidated my mother. And then when I was growing up, my mum was... You could not intimidate my mother, not in the slightest, but I literally saw fear in my mum's eyes that day. So I, I knew, I was like, this is not going to end well. And my dad came home from work. My mum proceeded to tell exactly my dad exactly what happened. My dad called me into the living room. I told my dad. Yes, I was acting out. That was selfish of me. I apologize. I apologize to my mother. I apologize to my dad for disrespecting my mum, my dad, my family. Remember, honor thy mother, honor thy father. Um, and then I proceeded to say, yes, Ben was very defensive. He protected me from from mum correcting me. And my dad said, well, we can't have that, son. And so Ben went to go live with my grandmother. And that's when the melancholy in me really came out. Which was a bit of a good move because about four weeks later someone tried breaking into my nan's house. And Ben uh, almost killed them. The, in the invader. They were pulling out the rubber seal in between the... Um, it's not a porch, but it's basically the only thing you can be considered as a porch. So where me and my brothers, me and my brother and my sisters used to park our bikes, so we didn't drag mud into the house. But you've got the front door here, the side door here, and you've got another door right behind it. So it's like a little four, three door entryway system, and it was awkward. Well, they were pulling the rubber seal out of the second door on the side here. Ben knew this. Now, Ben's not silly. Ben's not one of these dogs that will just stand and just growl and growl and snarl and growl and growl. 
But what he did was he went upstairs, nudged my nan awake to say, look, there's someone downstairs that shouldn't be downstairs. So he went downstairs and he waited. He literally waited on his belly like this. My nan tells me this story, told me, told me this story immensely. And he would wait on his belly like this. And the moment the guy pulled the glass out and stuck his head around the corner, his face touched my dog's nose. And my dog didn't blink, it didn't do nothing, it just lifted its lips and showed him his teeth. And at that point my nan, <laughs> my nan took a broom handle and whacked him right on the fucking top of his head. As hard as she could. As hard as, not those aluminum bendy one. no, it was a solid. My nan, full disclosure, my nan used to be a cleaner for the local council so she got industrial prop, uh, mops and brooms and stuff that were very fucking hefty and she cracked him across the head and he screams and the first thing ben does is grab him by the face and this guy's screaming now knowing that there's a dog dogman's face latched onto him like this and ben's not shaking natural instinct for a dog is to shake ben didn't use to shake he pulled like you're playing tug of rope so the first thing he's done is he's pulled the guy through the hole in the door that he's made into my nan's house as she's beating him mercilessly with this fucking mop broom handle she calls she doesn't call 999 so you got to say in south london we don't call coppers until bodies are on the floor okay we deal with everything in-house okay because everyone knows everyone okay and apparently my nan even knew this guy yet he had the balls to break into my nan's property by the way it, it, it's okay to say this because the guy's no longer alive no my nan did not end him no my dog did not end him wanted to didn't uh, uh needless to say he robbed someone who he shouldn't have robbed and life like the movie snatch kind of happened point is my mum my nan calls my mum and my dad then they, my nan lived in a place called Peckham. Yes, I've heard every Rodney and Dale boy joke in existence. We live in a place called Camberwell now. Camberwell recently has been in the news because of the riots and the fights and whatnot. That was an everyday occurrence in the 70s, 80s and 90s and into the 2000s. In Peckham, Camberwell, Dulwich, Lewisham, uh, uh, um, Bermondsey, Broccoli, you name it. Brixton, in those areas, those five, se seven, eight, seven to eight areas, yeah, that I mentioned, there were always gang fights, there was always gang wars, there was always something going on, and the police just didn't fucking care. They still don't fucking care. Campbell Police Station was shut down in 1994, I want to say, 94, 95. They closed an entire police station down in Camberwell because the crime was so high the police couldn't handle it so they closed it down and the police station in Peckham became their main dispatch uh, 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 police station which is right at the end of the street that I grew up on and me and my brother used to joke by counting how many police paddy wagons would go by would tell me if Millwall was winning or losing our local football team well back to the story so my mum and my dad they can't leave us in the house alone. So we all get in the we all bundle in my mum's Volvo 240 hatchback. And we get to my nan's house. And my, I can hear my nan screaming, Ben, let him go. Ben, let him go. My dad comes in there and he grabbed Ben by his collar and he's like, Ben, spit him out. Nothing. My mum, my mum kicks my dog in the balls. Thinking that's going to let him go. Nope. I walk in and I'm said, Ben, spit him out. So he goes, and runs up to me and sits at my feet. Literally sits on my feet. Looking up at me. Like, did I do good? Did I do good? Did I do good? And I'm scratching right here under his chin and on his neck. And I pull my hand away and it's red with blood. The guy's face has bite holes all in him. So he gets up. Yeah. And tries to run past my dad, who's built like a fucking tank. Okay. 
six two, you know, two hundred and thirty something pounds, muscle, day labourer, army vet, you know, day labourer, army veteran, fucking you name it. My dad was always was always physically fit, you know. Somehow gets past my dad, knocks my mum to the ground, which pissed my dad off even more, pissed Ben off even more. Barrels out through the front door, leg jumps over my nan's front gate, darts right, and is heading towards the William Hill betting shop. I tell Ben, go get him. Ben jumps up, runs, leaps over my mum, through the door, leaps over the gate, and less than two seconds later, I can hear the guy screaming, get him off, get him off, get him off. My dad goes running out there. Ben has got the guy by his dick and balls in the the whole thing, the Frank and the Bings, and even part of his inner thighs in his mouth. And this time he's shaking. And my dad's screaming, oh my God, he's going to castrate the poor bastard. And he's screaming at me, Dan, get your dog off of him. Literally, he's screaming, Soyo, Soyo, can't get forward, Megara! Because my dad, again, English was my dad's second language, Gaelic was his first. And Soyo is my Gaelic name. So I go running out there, and I yell, Ben, and I'm like, Ben, here, come! And so he's not let go, but he's dragging the man back to me by his dick and balls. The police finally show up. The police are on the verge of wanting to 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 dispose dispose of my dog, and I looked at him and said, "You even think about it, and I will give the command to castrate this man. Don't even think about it." So the police back off. I'm like, "Cuff him now!" So the police cuff him, and I tell Ben, "Spit him out." And spit. So Ben goes. Boop. He ruptured one of the man's testicles, and damaged several nerve endings in his legs. And all Ben did was come up to me, sit down, and I immediately take my nan's tea towel and I start wiping his face and his neck and want to make sure he's not cut or bleeding or anything, because if he is, I'm going to take him to the vets and I'm going to sue the fuck out of that douche. And I was, was going to say, you know, police call for an ambulance, ambulance take him away, he had like 70 something stitches in his groin and in his face. And everyone, and I mean everyone in Peckham, from that point on, no, you did not rob 55 Meeting House Lane. To the point where my neighbours would ask my nan if they could babysit Ben. Because he was a very disciplined dog. He was trained by a police dog handler. And then an army dog handler. Before I even got my hands on him. And he knew every command that I gave him just from hand gestures if I put up my pinky finger he would walk up and sit and rest his head literally at that time it was on my hip but uh, almost up on my rib cage and he would literally rest his face like this so this is my rib cage rest his face like this and he'd be looking up at him like that which is what a uh, um a female wolf does to the alpha when there's a disagreement. She will rest her neck, her own face. She puts her own life by resting her vulnerability over his to keep to make sure that the uh, uh, other uh, male doesn't go for his throat. She willingly sacrifices her life. That's what he was doing. And that was just from my baby finger. Now if I gave this command to him which is pinky finger pinky it means defensive possible attacker literally my hand is right here so i go pinky pointer pinky he sees that he knows exactly what that means and if i want him to sit devil horns that means sit upright full fist down means i want him to lay down oh yeah he was very well, he was a very smart dog. Eventually my dad, my dad eventually got intimidated by him. My dad couldn't, could not uh, discipline me or correct me. Couldn't even raise his voice to me without Ben getting angry. And so my dad was like, we're going to have to get, we have to, I've got a friend who will take care of him. And he did, he was a security guard, dog handler, and worked at a, um, worked at a, uh, um, 
fact, well, it's not technically a factory, but it's it's uh, a makeup uh, 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 facility that designs makeups and stuff. And some bullshit animal rights activists, ironically, broke in. Ben did his job very, very well, and one of them shot him. And they didn't just shoot him with a gun, they shot him with a crossbow. And when I found out, that's when that melancholy in me decided to stay. And then a year later, I lost my father. And that's when it just grew roots. With my baby brother being sick. That melancholy has decided to keep showing its ugly face. Mm. And also to clear up some confusion, a lot of people <laughs> keep asking me, what is that over there, that board game? Okay. That's a game called Tank Command. I used to play that game with my father when I was younger. I found that in a bric-a-brac store. It's it's almost all there. Um, you can either be the British or the Israeli. Or, well, Soviets. They're, they're IS-2s versus uh, uh, Chieftain. I think they're Chieftain Mark 1s. No, Chieftain Mark, Mark 5s. Um, Chieftain 5 ones, yeah. And, um, yeah, I bought them because I wanted to paint the, the model tanks. And... I have extreme fond memories of playing that board game at my family's caravan down near Campersands. And, um, yeah, I bought it for the nostalgia. Because when I first saw it, I, I got really choked up, very teary. And uh, I still do when I see it. Because, like I said, a lot of people keep asking me about it. What's with the red-headed kid in the corner? <laughs> you know what it is. Um, oh. Gosh. So I hope that, that solves that out. I will be getting a new 3D print a new resin 3D printer here soon. My six inch is being moved to a different table. Uh, the eight inch is staying there and I'm getting another eight inch. So I'm getting another one of her. She'll be right there. So I'll be able to do um much more bigger uh one thirty fifth scale tank uh, uh kits. Um, and um, I will be releasing those. I've got some more cyber security courses I need to um, sign up for, pay for, and finish um, for this year. And so, yeah, and I'm also, like I said, uh, we've got a new owner of the house. Someone purchased the property from my previous landlord and wants to meet all the tenants. Um, so I, I may be forced to move anyway. Uh, so if I do, uh, if I am forced to move, I will be moving up north. So that would be, um, you know, um, Grantham, um, Manchester, God forbid. Um, not Birmingham, fuck Birmingham. Maybe Bedford. Bedford's not that far, not that far from from my family. Either London or or. Uh, um, or, or my family in Cambridge, uh, so I might, I might I might be looking to head up that direction. So that's 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 good news for me. And um, Jesus Christ, twenty four minutes of me just chatting bollocks, fucking hell. So yeah. When I say that, um, you never truly ever do get over depression. Let me, let me make that abundantly clear. Uh, I'm on medication, I'm not even going to lie. I mean, phenogen to sleep, uh, metazapine. Um, this is my painkillers for my hip, imozacone. I'm on these. Um, then I've got... Astro cholesterol. I've got fucking floxetine, 
help with hallucinations and yeah I'm, I'm on so many different medication now and all of it is to try and help me with my PTSD my combat PTSD and my depression slash melancholy that is in me oh and the glasses um, I recently got a prescription sorted so I might be swapping over to contact lenses so these might be going away I don't know yet um, I'm so used to wearing glasses now since I got back here but um, yeah So the problem with being living alone is you get used to the quiet. You get used to the loneliness. And eventually you get so used to the intrusive thoughts that run through your head about anything and everything. <laughs> I know. And what's funny is if you've actually been paying attention to this video, you've noticed that my eyes have gone from blue to green to grey. Now watch, now you're going to go back and watch the video and see that I'm right and literally see my eyes change colour in the video. No colour changer, no filters, no nothing. I have an uh, a acute uh, um, ocular disease where the iris colours of my eyes change depending on my mood. Which means I'll suck as a poker player. <laughs> apparently my father was a carrier of it because his father suffered from it, my grandfather um, so my father was a carrier of it but he didn't suffer from it I suffer from it but which means my son could have been a carrier of it because apparently it only affects the male, the male genome so and uh, luckily for me unfortunately I uh, only have two daughters my son Sadly passed away as a uh, infant. He never really got to enjoy life. This is why I am very, 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 very protective of my nieces, my nephews, and anyone who's in my life that have children. I don't force my way into the child's life, um, but... Uh, I just make it known that if they need to talk, I'm here. Uh, I've also got to f can sort out my hair. Oh man, I've got to go to the barber soon. This is a mess, bruv. Oh, this is manky. Right, what the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, I know it sounds horrible. I just, just noticed that my hair is just... Like, what is going on, bruv? <laughs> So I've been, I have been very, very busy. Um, I've been busy doing stuff uh, uh, off gaming. Um, and I've been doing some stuff on gaming, actually. Um, I've actually gotten pretty far in the tech tree in Enlisted. Um, let's see. I think I'm halfway through tier 2 currently right now. I've actually got a log in to check, so give me a few seconds. Um, and I hope, and while I'm doing that, I, I want to wish everyone who didn't see my, my last video a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, prosperous New Year for you. Uh, 2024 is starting to look up for me. Uh, I will know more about my brother's condition to later on today. It's currently 5 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I will know more about my brother's condition possibly here in about 8 to 9 hours. Because um, I'm going to call you know, my mum. And um, my mum usually doesn't get out of bed till noon because of her health conditions. Uh, she has uh, stints in her brain as well as a breathing 
issues. So she very rarely, very rarely uh, has a stable sleeping pattern. But uh, I will know more about my brother's uh, health condition, so I'll be able to do another Coffee Time with Cobra update for next week. Uh, let's see, I logged in. Research. Uh, yes. Uh, all of Tier 1 is done. Tier 2, I've got Strum Pistol, the Ge uh, uh, um, the Panzer Grandeur Banouche, uh, um 39 uh, anti-tank rifle. Um, yeah, and I'm just starting on the uh, Brenda Mod 30 machine gun. Once I've unlocked that, that will immediately allow me to start working on the MG34, um, which is something I've been wanting to get for quite some time. Because it's the, what's the MG34? Come on. Of course, the MG42 is tier 4. Um, so, yeah. Why is the MG15 tier 5? That makes no sense. I, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not even gonna bother. I'm, I'm not even gonna bother. <laughs> just, I'm, nope, nope, just, nope, nope. Don't question it. Uh, so yeah, we've got uh, one, two, three, uh, four, five of the six rifles uh, unlocked. Um, I've got one, two, three. Uh, one, yeah, three, no, two of the three SMGs unlocked. No, uh, two of the four, sorry, because there's two SMGs under the Beretta uh, M1918. You got the OVP um, uh, M1918, which is a weird design, because the sights are damn near covered up by the magazine, which makes no fucking sense. Recoil on that thing's gonna be ridiculous because there's no fucking grip for it. But uh, eh, we'll give it a shot. I love my SMGs. Um, what else? And I'm gonna be once I've got the um, Beretta uh, Mod 30 uh, light machine gun unlocked, I'm gonna go straight down the tank line because I saw the Panzer 3J1 was recently added, and I must, I simply just must have her in my collection because she's a Panzer 3. Panzer 3J1 is my favourite uh, variant of Panzer for you. Must know. Uh, out of the Panzer 3s, Panzer 4s, uh, Panzer 3J1 is my favourite Panzer 3. And my favourite Panzer 4 is the Panzer 4 F2. Is my favourite Panzer 4 variant. Um, reason being is all they are is just straight pure up guns. That's all they are. It's just straight pure up guns. Um, case in point, the Panzer 3J. Uh, J series, J1, J2s, uh, they, the difference between the J and the J1, uh, one is the gun, and two is a slight uh, uh, increase in horsepower and transmission change, that's it, uh, other than that, they're externally they look almost identical, with the exception of one's got a longer barrel, but yes, I've got the Panzer 3J, but they've, they've added the J1, as Picard says, so much win, so that's going to be fun, um, Japanese battle rating, I just recently unlocked the uh, S1 SMG squad, and I'm working on unlocking my first plane. Uh, America, I'm working on unlocking the first SMG, and then after that I will unlock most likely the first uh, tank, um, which is a Stuart. Um, Soviets, I've recently unlocked the PPD-34 squad, and I'm currently working on unlocking the PTRD, but you know what, no, I'm going to swap that out for the T-26 unlock. So yeah, we're going to start working on that on the T-26, because why the hell not? We also got the Mosin Carbon squad, there we go, just unlock that. That's my first tier 2 squad. Oh, no, it's my second tier 2 squad, sorry. So there we go. So, oh, they get a Winchester? Oh, fucking awesome! Oh, I love the Winchester in uh, some games. Ooh, nice. I like the Winchester, repeating rifle. Bash, bash, bash. 7 plus 1 in the breach. 
loved. John Wayne's favourite was that. Winchester repeating rifle was John Wayne's favourite rifle. Best part about Winchesters is they can take some nice modern upgrades, twisted barrels or fluted barrels, um, muzzle brakes, things of that nature. Just oof. Winchesters, love them. They are good. They are very good rifles. Uh, so yeah, other than that, that's pants really where I'm at. Uh, I'm mostly I'm gonna I'm gonna work on unlocking everything in the German tech tree first, obviously. Um, then I'll probably do the Japanese, and then I will work on the Americans and leave the Russians till last because they're Russians. <laughs> you know, a lot of people keep asking me why. Why do I have so much hatred uh, for for Russians? I'm like, in every single game I've ever played, where Russians are are the developers, like you World of Tanks, Armored Warfare, uh, War Thunder, the Germans, the the, the 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 Soviets or the Russians, whatever you want to call them, have always been over fucking powered because. Because they're a developer based in Russia, it is illegal for them not to show favor to the Russians. This is why the World of Tanks uh, 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 group, uh, the, the, some of the researchers in the World of Tanks group, um, are actually wanted people in Russia because they've depicted the, the great Russian T-34 tank or something like that in a bad... There is still a propaganda division designed to keep the T-34 myth, myth alive. You know that, right? Russia pays people in a damp, dark basement to come up with more lies about how great the T-34 was. Have you ever seen one up close? Yeah. Well, coffee's done video is done and so i must bid you adieu take care guys and i'll see you in the next one